Ladies and gents, welcome back to Dat Day 9 Daily. It's part number 2 of daily number 501 where we learn to be a better gamer. In part number 1, we established that Mara wanted to do this mech style, showed a game of him losing quite quickly and to just a fast Colossus rush, and then two follow-up games that explored this adjustment of perhaps I could go for a little more aggression at the start to solve some of my problems later on. Now what we're going to do in part two is we're going to rewatch that moment in the game, which I'll be speeding up right now. Come on, load, replay, load. And in this way, we'll think, what is another way in which we could adjust? And this is where I actually want to note some specific time. So I'm going to use my ever so handy note document with dat notes. Excellent. So what I want to be writing down are some key timings that are really, really specific for me. So one that I'll note right now is that my factory is getting started. My factory and my command center start doing stuff at six. Six minutes, factory starts making stuff and CC starts. I will expand my dat notes documents. Now, I'm not going to be using these notes extensively to build upon and to do all that sort of other stuff, but this provides to me some useful timings to note, like, oh, around 8, my armories get started. 7.45, I'll do it like this. 7.45, two armories begin. And let's also find out when our tanks really get started. We get our tank started at around 8.30. 8.30, tank production begins. Now notice how winged this is. I didn't put one tank begins and one tech lab gets started on other factory and this factory idle. I just want to know about when my tank begins. So that way I can say something useful to myself, such as, when this attack comes at 9.45, I'll actually even back off just a smidge I'll say at 9.30, at 9.30, I have five Hellions, one tank, five Marines, two mines. This, and a bunker, and no bunker. I won't even write anything. Cool. I don't think there's anything else particularly noteworthy there. All right, excellent. This is the setup that I want to have in my head, so that way I kind of know what I'm working with when all my stuff dies. Now... What is an adjustment that could be done? What is an adjustment you could perform in these games rather than getting uh, a lot more aggressive? How about we focus a little bit more on trying to get our defense up for when that attack happens? Where is this game? It was on, it was in Core Hall City. Excellent. So what we're gonna do right now is this game demonstrates the idea of we let the losses come to us we explore ways to fix those losses with subtle adjustments, and that's how we're gonna step forward and improve our play. We don't do wild craziness. So we see Mar was once again up against the player Pleasure Mind, and what's kind of funny to note, in this replay pack that Maro kindly provided to me, um, Maro literally played the games in the order I'm showing them. He had the quick loss, that we, uh, the Colossus one, and then he tried the two aggressive ones, and now we're in this game. So Morrow actually says at the start of this game, my early game strategy bad is my early spider, shit, my early <laughs> widow mine harassment bad. Maybe I should just return back to something normal. So we're gonna see how Morrow does this adjustment. Speeding it up, speeding all the things up. Again, the big takeaway I want for you to have from this daily is not, here is the specific way to win with mech, <laughs> now that we have no Warhounds. Instead, I want it to be, this is how I can slowly adjust my play. And you're starting to see how all these pieces come together, like why it's important to have good fundamentals and why it's important to have concepts instead of specific builds, because then we have the flexibility to learn. The last step, in the process is actually coming up with the ultra specific build order. So Pleasure Mind is doing some kind of early expand that we're fine with. We're gonna speed it up. 
And I have my handy notepad document. Yeah. We once again see four marines, which I think is really cool. I think this marine widow mine thing is super sweet. All right, cool. At six minutes, check. Factory starts making stuff and CC starts. Approximately, yeah. Boss mode engaged. Widow mine, which totally would love if it was one supply. Nudge, nudge, blizzard. Nudge, nudge, blizzard. But look at this. Two widow mines pop out. Instantly, two factories go down and a tech lab. And then the Hellion production starts. We'll see what impact that has in a bit. Do, 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 do. Still trying to push back as best as we can. We don't really get to do that much insanely powerful stuff. But we're actually making fewer Hellions, more Widow Mines, and look at this. We're actually starting the tank production almost a full production cycle earlier. So what I'll do right now is I'll say the old way, the new way. Six minutes, same as before. This time, 7.45, tank production begins. Notice how this is a lot earlier than that. So we actually see not as much emphasis on Hellions, a little bit more emphasis on the Widow Mines. And overall, the biggest thing that we're doing differently is no armories at all yet. None. Zero armory. Hellion's doing a, a good little bit of scouting right there. So I'm going to speed it up just a smidge, so that way we can see that at 9.30... At 9.30, look at how much better of a situation we're in. At 9.30, we have three Hellions, two tanks, six Marines, two mines. And we probably could even have more mines if we can serve them a little bit better. And as a matter of fact, our player is trying to do an aggressive bust of us right at the start of the game. We even would barely get this siege tank out in time. Morrow does something that I'm not so sure how I feel about. He runs his marines out of the bunker, scans to pick off the observer, but it doesn't really matter because he ran out of mines immediately. But siege mode finishes in the midst of all this. And Morrow successfully keeps himself alive. And then, what time do these suckers get started? 9.20? Yeah, thereabouts. 9.20. <laughs> Actually, I'll just go ahead and say, and armories begin. So, what have we seen right now? By 10 minutes, in both of these situations, everything is the same. We have the third base. We have the three factories. We have the two armories. But because we took this and put it later, and then we started the pr tank production earlier in this game, we're actually keeping ourselves alive. Notice how incredibly tiny an adjustment that is. That's an extremely subtle thing where um, if you watch... Uh, I would say, like, you know, your average gold, platinum leaguer try to do the strategy Morrow does, and you watch, like, a grandmaster player try to do the strategy that Morrow's doing, they'll look pretty much the same. From a bird's eye view, it won't really look like there's anything that exceptional. However, when Morrow does his thing, you'll start to notice things like, wow, his tank production is beginning almost a full minute earlier. And there's actually ways that Morrow could have even got another 10, 15 seconds earlier than that. So that helps a ton. That really helps get us a solid moment where we've gone, oh my god, I've, I've staved off the early pressure. I am suddenly a three-basing Terran versus a two-basing Protoss, and I know this because I have my heli in there. Kick frickin' ass. So now what? Well now, Morrow has the luxury of going, okay, let's keep playing this one out, and now, oops, now I'm probably gonna be doing this exact same build on other occasions, perhaps without that sort of sacrifice. But, I also have the opportunity to start to get losses and think to myself, oh, well, okay, maybe I can adjust and weigh X and Y and Z, and what are some other issues that my build order is ha or having? 
Here's my two armories wonderfully working away. And Marl has himself up a pretty nice defense. But once again, we start to see the real issues that will be faced with uh, the mech army. Is that not really sick? I'll actually just reshow that. This is something that's just super cool. That I honestly think that anybody could do. And a birdie. Just getting the warp prism right away. Having a whole bunch of warp prisms and see you later. Trying to hit the front. So Maro is encountering this semi-issue, but... He hasn't really lost a huge number of workers. In the units lost tab, it's fairly even. And Morrow's done a pretty impressive job holding on. So at this point in time, I actually wouldn't do a significant adjustment like quickly ring my base with turrets. I might do something slight, like send Widow Mines to the back and build fewer Hellions at this phase in the game. But Mauro finally gets to go into Mad Macro mode, where he's actually building four factories at once, getting his Blue Flame upgrade. An attempted big old bust happens by Pleasure Mind. He tries to warp in right on top of the tanks, but Mauro controls a little bit too good. This is actually where you want to be as any player in any matchup. You want to have a defense that's so thin that your opponent is, t is tempted to bust it every time, but actually cannot. That was close, or it, that might have felt close, but that really was not close in the slightest. And uh, in retrospect, I think that right now, Morrow could build only Hellions and have just five or six tanks and just rally and push. I don't know if that's true. Maybe you can throw in some more Widow Mines, but the, the more tanks you're building, the more support you need for the tanks because they're incredibly vulnerable to Immortals and Zealots. But if your opponent's low on units, a few tanks plus support looks good. Do we need to do that in this game? No, it's something we could try. Let's actually take a look at what Morrow did try in this game. Again, with this notion of... We want to let the losses come to us. So Morrow takes the, the much more so passive route. He has his Battle Hellion mode. Oh my god. And by the way, if you look down here, I actually thought my video card was screwing up. I've actually never looked at a Battle Mode Hellion before. What does a normal Hellion look like? Holy crap. Does this thing change when they go into Battle Hellion mode? Oh my god. Hold on. Hold on. I don't care what my analysis is about. This is about to be kick-ass. Oh my god, okay. I'm going to normal. Oh my god. Okay, I'm looking right here. I'm looking right down here. Oh. No way. What the... Oh shit, Blizzard! No way, the portrait changes. What? The portrait changes? Oh, that's badass. I don't care about anything intellectual. That is fucking sweet. My god, Blizzard. Ugh. Dad art team. Oh god, that is so baller. It's all in the details. Okay, so what did Maro try in this game? Alright, we're gonna be moving forward in the gameplay. <laughs> My gut still says that you could probably flood with spider mines and hellions and make a push a lot earlier that this would be difficult to deal with. I actually don't know if the Widow Mines deal max damage to immortals or um, whether it just does the, the only the 10. But we see the sort of mass command centering. I mean, Morrow's style is pretty basic to state at this point in time. He just gets two starports worth of Vikings. This was his initial core. These three factories. Then he added on four more. Three with Tech Lab. These ones, one with Reactor. And did the double starport uh, at the end of the day. So I'll actually come to... Yeah, right here. We see that all the factories get made first. And then later down the line, the starports get made. To sort of deal with Colossusing. And of course, Warp Prisms. But everything at this point is pretty straightforward. We build extra command centers with our extra money. 
And what do we do with the fact that we have so many mules? We sacrifice huge swaths of SCVs, thereby making our core army bigger. So this looks very clearly to be in Morrow's favor. And this is where we get the opportunity to do some more learning. Battle mode Hellions. Charged up. Everything gets destroyed that is a zealot immediately. There's a blink on top of the tanks, which actually goes very poorly for the Protoss player. But this ridiculous number of immortals, as it turns out, is stupidly good at killing a mech army. Now, <laughs> now one thing I want to note is it's very easy to do this following uh, in a game, and I'm almost laughing because I know everyone's done it, I do it, you do it, Morrow's about to do it, where after the thing that has killed you has killed you, you say, oh, what would have helped for that? What would have been useful? Oh, you know what would have been really useful? Ghosts. <laughs> Ghosts would have been really useful. Let's go ahead and start that process. Yeah. In other words, the thing that you really needed five minutes ago, you start getting after it's not useful to have them. <laughs> right? I mean, sure, ghosts are going to help, but damn it, it really would have been nice if we had already had ghosts in that attack. So there's one uh, more timing that I want to note in the midst of all this. At 1830 is when the big attack happens. 1830, that big attack happens. And I'm going to put some extra notes on this dat big attack a little bit. This occurred um, without, um, without too much being messed with. Sure, we got attacked, but it didn't really violently change our build. No attacks on our part from 10 to 18 minutes. This was a pretty straightforward push for us. But it got completely and totally, utterly destroyed. Now I have to speed forward a little bit, because again, I have a show that happens at 8 that I must go to. We have some trouble controlling our expansions. Shmurgle, wurgle, 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 wurgle. And just now we begin getting the ghosts. And our first ghost pops out at 21 minutes. What we're actually going to do is we're going to go on to part three. I have 13 minutes to be to my next show, so we're going to take a very fast break, do a very fast part three, where what we're going to see is all these ideas come together for Morrow, and he's going to be able to have a really clean mech at the very end with a lot of cool elements in it. So let's go ahead and go to part three right now.